was it? No one. A wrong number. You get that upset over a wrong number? What I am upset about is you. I want you to get out of here. I'm not leaving until you explain that note to me. I can't explain the note. I didn't write it. Well, who else could have? It's in Quinn's handwriting. It was dated yesterday. It can't be Quinn's handwriting. What are you up to? Nothing. Why would I do this? I don't know. Why would you lock me in your cellar? Why would you put up fake portraits? Why would you poison Kelly? I told you before Quinn made me do everything. All right, Quinn made you do everything. Who's going to run your life for you now that he's dead? Because it's obvious you need a little help. What are you talking about? You and your problem with reality. My problem with reality? You know, I got your little piece of forgery and, and I suddenly realized... Why you wanted to drive Kelly crazy? It was for the company, wasn't it? Get out of here! And I thought that that straight jacket in your closet was just for recreational purposes. I'm going to call the police. Uh, <coughs> tell me something. When you um, when you write these little notes in Quinn's name, you think this stuff up on your own, or does he sort of channel his thoughts through you? You're making me crazy. I didn't write the letter. I don't know who wrote oh, it. Oh, I see. He sends you these sort of subconscious uh, directives from the grave, and you're not aware of them? Will you get out of here? So, I just want to make one thing clear. I don't care what form of communication you may have with Quinn, but I don't want to be his pen pal, so just leave me out of it. I don't want you or your sickness anywhere near me. He didn't leave a return address, but I'm uh, sure you know where to reach him. around like that. Well, it, it suddenly occurs to me I have staked your entire future on Robert Barr's ability to do a Cockney accent. You know, you're thinking about it the wrong way. And what is the right way? You're not basing your whole plan on whether Robert can do a adequate Cockney accent. That's exactly what I'm basing my plan on. No, you're on. basing your whole plan on a very shrewd but instinctual analysis of Flame's character. Say what? I think the girl is crazy and it's not going to take much to shove her over the edge. You have a very attractive cold streak in you. Did I ever, ever tell you that? I am a very nice person, but after what she's done to me, to you, to Kelly, Robert Craig, I'm not going to shed any tears of sympathy. I hope she does hard time. Well, you do, but this is the only chance we've got. You know, we've... We blow this, we're not going to see another one. Are you this grumpy with fellow cops? You know, I'd hate to be on a stakeout with you. I'm not grumpy. <laughs> Gary. Hey, here you go, man. Listen, man, uh, thanks a lot for this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, next time we'll just for something easy, huh? Like the Mona Lisa or a 64 Petrus? A little hard to get, was it? Well, let's just say that ever since Timmons lost that bullet, he's got that evidence room guarded like Fort Knox. Okay, I'll get these back tonight, I promise, and I'll, I'll cover you, and uh, I owe you one. Hey, big one. Hey, thanks a lot. You bet. Voila. 64 Petrus, huh? Some sophisticated constables in Santa Barbara. Oh, baby. Mm, that's right on time. Castillo. Hi, it's me. Listen, I think it went okay. She looked white as a ghost when she heard my voice. Well, that's good. And I just got the stuff I've been waiting on, so, uh... Looks like we're ready for the next step. It's about time, is it? This is for you. Sleuthing again, eh? Well, I guess it can't hurt. You know, Keith, don't give yourself a hernia trying to read. I'll sum it up for you. Oh, please do. All right. Flame claims that Quinn is the one who made the arrangements for those portraits she used to gaslight Kelly. I'm aware of that. I tracked down the artist who actually painted those portraits. Oh, how much does he charge? I'm thinking of getting a portrait for Gina as a wedding present. I showed him a picture of Quinn. He never laid eyes on the guy, ever. Really? He's willing to testify the only person he ever dealt with was Flame. And this? This is what what it's all about? Well, that and the, the drug, of course. Which drug? The drug Flame gave Kelly and her tea. I found out where it was purchased, and I spoke to the salesperson. 
How dogged of you. He says he never sold the stuff to anybody but Flame. And I suppose all this is leading somewhere. Well, eh, Flame claims that Quinn made all the arrangements, but no one I questioned talked to anybody but Flame. What does that mean? Maybe she was freelancing on the side or something? <laughs> Why would she do that? Well, I don't know. But maybe you ought to consider the fact that your star witness is, dare I suggest it, lying. Well, wouldn't that be a comforting thought to you and the defendant? I mean, uh, your wife. Yeah, I'm sure the press would be interested to know just how comforting a thought it is. Especially since the DA let the real guilty party walk practically scot-free. You don't understand the psychology of this case. It doesn't matter that Flame picked up the picture or bought the drugs. She was being intimidated by Armitage, emotionally, you know? Which can be a lot stronger than physical threats. In a way, she was a prisoner of that man. Funny you should mention that, since this woman is so good at getting out of prisons. Emotional and otherwise. Huh? Oh, I don't know if I should ruin your day by telling you this, but I got no choice. You're not gonna like it. wrong with the tea? No, it's fine. I could start cleaning it up. It's fine. You... Where the hell is my purse? Thank you, Miss Beaufort. Thanks, Eddie. That was perfect. Flame, I've stumbled onto something that may affect the murder investigation and your testimony. I think it may be important you meet me at Quinn's house and we'll talk cordially Keith Timmons, district attorney. Oh, God, what now? Sorry, bucko, it's a no-go. Why, Keith? Because there's no evidence that shows me that Flame got out of that cell. But I just explained to you or how she could have... evidence that she was acting on her own. Unfortunately, Mr. Armitage is not here to prove us to the contrary since someone put a bullet in him. And you're still going to try to convince a jury it was Eden. You don't understand how vulnerable Flame was. She was used by Quinn. She was so much under his control, she couldn't have had the willpower to turn against him or take his life. Even if she was out of that cell. Eden, on Honest the other spare, hand. Spare me the summation, please. Enter. This just came for you, Mr. Timmons. Olson, you're going to have to change your aftershave or stay out of the locker room. It's not me. It's that. Go ahead and read it, Keith. I'll, I'll wait. I'll consider the information that you brought in, Castillo. You do that. Did Ms. Belfort deliver this personally? One of the bellhops from her hotel delivered it. Oh, I see. You, you can go. Keith, I've suddenly remembered something very important. I think it could affect your case against Eden Capwell. That a girl, Flame. I'm leaving right away for Quinn's house. Please meet me there. 
There's something I want to show you. Flame. Babe, anything you want to show me, I want to see. Good, you're here. Yeah, we parked way down the road. So did I. Everything's set here. Keith got his letter while I was with him. The perfume was perfect. I think Flame got her. She was in pretty bad shape. I don't know if she read it. Showtime. Let's take our places. You get away from me. I must say, you don't seem very keen to see me. Go! Don't go, please! Who are you? Who am I? How soon I forget. <laughs> and I always said you knew me better than anyone. No! But it looks like I didn't know you all that well. Did I, love? Yes, I underestimated you, I did. Go of me! It's a right proper example of a woman scorned. You know, the end of fury, you had a sweet little 38. No! You're dead, you bastard! I killed you and I saw you die! You're dead! I killed you! I killed you! 